Hello, it's Skylar Thomas of White Shark Video, and I'm bringing you another episode of Sharky Product Reviews and Shark Editing. Today we're talking about resolution versus frame rate. What do I mean? Well, unfortunately, you usually have to choose one or the other or somewhere in between compromising unless you have super expensive high-end equipment that shoots at a crazy high resolution and a crazy frame rate. What a dream that would be. So, instead, you have to either choose super high resolution with a lower frame rate or super high frame rate and a lower resolution. How do you choose that? What are the pros and cons of each? And that's what we're going to talk about today. The good news is, and in this particular episode, we're going to be talking about GoPros and action cams these days are getting pretty darn good. I shot 4K 60 and I also shot 1080, which used to be the top of the line not very long ago. And I shot 1080 at 240 frames a second. So I got standard HD at 240 frames a second, which used to be unheard of. And 4K at 60, that's not exactly too shabby, but what do you gain and what do you lose when you choose these different settings? Let's take a look. Okay, as long as I'm on this frame, let's start here. Here we have a great white shark, and that was this year in Guadalupe. I shot that with the Hero 7 Black, and I shot it in 4K at 60 frames a second. Now, if you should happen to forget what you shot your footage at and need a reminder, you can get that information inside of QuickTime or if you're already here in Final Cut, go up in this right side and you can, we're going to scroll through these so when everyone knows what they are. We've got the video inspector that's already on. You have the uh, color correction and you have audio correction and manipulation and you have the information inspector. I clicked on the information inspector and you got all these details now. Directly underneath of the eye icon at the top you have the uh, size, the 3840 by 2160, which means 4K, and you have 59.94, which means 60 frames per second. And if you want even more details, you can scroll through here, and once again, you see the listing frame size, 3840 by 2160, and video frame rate. 59.94. All right, so now we know what we're dealing with. Let's take a look at this clip. Let's blow it up so everyone can see it. Whoa, okay, lots of problems here. Let's start that over. Watch these problems again. Hit play. I mean, it is just jumping and jerking and skipping frames all over the place. And that's for a couple of reasons. At least one reason is that my computer can't handle it. Um, you know, it's not powerful enough. You could solve that by spending a hell of a lot of money on upgrading your computer. Or you could use um, some tricks. And here is a trick I learned recently. This, as I said, was shot um, at 4K60. Now up in the left side here is the project. And once I click on that over here in the information uh, inspector it shows you the settings for the project and it's 4K60. What if I make my project settings different? Okay so file new project Make sure it's in the same event, by the way, so it's easier to find the project later. 
All right, we're going to call this 4K60 at 30. What? That doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Most of the things I do here don't make sense. But um, before, it was set at its actual frame rate, 60. Now, I'm doing it at 30. So here we have the new project. And now inside of this event with my different clips and projects, we're going to go down to that same clip, which is this one. And we're going to drag that clip onto the timeline of a project that is set for 30 frames per second, even though the footage is 60 frames per second. And let's blow that up and see how it plays back. Terrible, right? So what did we accomplish? Nothing. I was just doing that to establish that at this point you'll have the same results. But here's the trick. Come up to the time remapper and instead of choosing slow, go down here to automatic speed and voila, it expanded it. So it doubled it to be precise, which makes sense because it was shot at 60 and I reduced it to 30 in the project. And now because I told it to find its automatic speed, it is going to play every single frame that I filmed it at. I am going to detach the audio because there's no point in hearing all that noise uh, while we're doing this. All right, let's blow it up and see how that looks. Oh yeah, much smoother, much smoother. Let's get the whole thing from right when the shark shows up. All right, blow that up. Beautiful. Oh my God. Okay. Who the hell, what kind of a jerk puts that on the cage? Look at the epic. Look at the shark turning and looking at the camera. How epic would that still frame be if that stupid thing hadn't been there? What kind of dickhead puts that on the cage? This one right here. But you never know. I mean, you never know. That camera that was mounted up there could have gotten the most epic shot ever. In this particular case, it ruined the most epic shot ever. Now, I do have the footage from that other camera. You know, the one that ruined the great shot. And that was a Hero 4, which means that at 4K, it could only record at 30 frames a second. So... To be thorough, why don't we compare the 4K30 and the 4K60. Now this is a Hero 4 going up against a Hero 7, so as far as the image quality, that's not fair. The Hero 7 is definitely better. But let's see how much of a difference filming at 30 frames is to 60 frames, both in 4K. Here we go. File, new project and Hero 4, 4K, 30. Okay, this is what it looks like, just so you know. get the audio out of there like I said that could have worked out that could have been an epic shot but obviously it was just slightly too high so I got mostly a uh, dorsal fin as the shark went past but the point here is to compare slowing down 30 frames to when you have 60 frames and can slow down. First of all, and it's rather obvious, I don't have the manipulation option of taking something that was actually shot in 60 frames and putting it into a project that is set for 30 frames and then using the actual speed technique. So 
at a loss I don't really have many options here except to use the slow feature so let's slow that to 50% and let's play that back and see how good it looks I mean it doesn't look bad does it that's 4k quality of a great white swing by and it doesn't look natural per se but it doesn't look horrible so for your friends etc um, fine for National Geographic probably not now that we've got this shark here look at that face look at that grin look at that smile and look at that beautiful eye now in order for you to better appreciate that eye I'm gonna blow it up and because I shot it in 4k I can do that without really worrying about it because there's so much data captured at 4k that I can scale it up I went over to the information or to the video inspector I'm gonna come down into the transform section and go to scale and I'm gonna scale it up and I'm gonna scale it up and I'm gonna scale it up and obviously that's not the part I want you to be looking at so I'm gonna come here and click this which allows me to transform and reposition and I can do it with my mouse instead of going here and typing some numbers into the position uh, data input and I'm just going to use my mouse to put that where I want you to be looking and there is that shark's face and the quality still looks great and I could export this as a still frame capture the frame and probably have something um, pretty printable and I can go in and do some enhancements to make this even crisper for a better print but that's a different tutorial all right let's see what would have happened obviously presumably this would not look as good if I had shot it at 1080 or 720 and tried to do the same thing but there's got to be a trade-off right yes in this case the shark wasn't moving terribly fast I mean it moved kind of fast but not crazy fast so shooting at the high frame rate um, wasn't that important here but what if I was shooting something really fast like a tuna let's take a look <laughs> Okay, here we are in another library. It is a library dedicated to the split cam shots that I got on the trip and inside of one of the um, events we've got these clips and I am clicking on this clip and I want to show you something really quick. It says 1920 by 1080 at 60p. I shot that at 240 frames. Um, Final Cut doesn't actually have that option when you're importing um, but if you come down here in the information inspector you see that it does recognize that it was shot at 240 although up here it does not say so um, just to even the playing field between what we just did with the 4k let's create a project in the same manner and we're going to call this one 1080 at 30 1080 240 at 30 because it was actually shot at 240 frames but see over here that's not an option and because we did the 4k one at 30 for comparison let's leave that one at 30 don't forget to come over here and change this to 1080 though okay so here we go new project bring that down and might as well demonstrate this just uh, all right you see how it's jerking all right you saw that before let's go ahead and do the same automatic thing remember we're not doing the slow feature and let me tell you why really quick S going slow doing the slow thing 
supposedly, according to Larry Jordan's forums, just doubles existing frames in order to try and create the effect of it slowing down instead of showing the actual frames that you were filmed that were filmed. So, and also, this is a great trick to find out what the optimal playback is. So let's say you're not um, really familiar with all this frame rate stuff and you have no idea what to choose when you're slowing it down. Well, this figures it out for you. So I go down and I click automatic speed and 13%, slowed it down to 13%. All right, so I guess that's what it required to show every frame of something that was shot at 240 frames a second into a project that is set to 30 frames. All right, let's blow that up and see how it looks. Oh, nice and smooth. Look at that seagull flying by as the water comes up to cover it. Obviously, we want to be looking at something more interesting than that, so let's get to some other clips. But you see how nice and smooth this is. There's some tuna coming by. Let's scan ahead. There's the island of Guadalupe. And, come on, where are you? All right, let's see how this looks. There's another seagull going by. Ooh, and there was the tuna. And let me tell you something, those guys were fast. They just flashed across the screen. So 240 frames a second was great for them. Okay, I did do a little bit of dome port footage at 4k 60 so let's uh see how that compares and let's do a new project dome 4k 60 and again let's do it at 30 and Remember to change this back up to 4K because it is shot in 4K. All right, so let's grab this clip and drag it down. That's too much. We don't want to deal with all that. Once again, let's uh, remove the audio. You can also go here into the audio inspector and just uncheck it. All right, and Let's go back to the video inspector now down here. Obviously, you see this footage looks a little bit funny. It's upside down because when I walked out onto the cage and handheld dipped the dome port down into the water, of course, the GoPro was upside down inside the housing. We can solve that very quickly by going up to rotation in the video inspector and typing in 180 and hitting tab. And boom, there it is. All right, now let's see how this plays back. Ooh, not so good. Not so good. Jerking all over the place to where... I have no idea what happened here, if anything. Okay, so obviously we need to make some changes. But there's only so much we can do because I shot it at 60. We can at least, as we learned from the previous lesson, slow that down to half. Automatic speed should extend this by half, and it did. There we are at 50%. And let's play it back and see how much it improved. That's better. It's not perfect. You can see it's still jerking, but at least now you have a clue about what happened there. Now you know the disadvantages of not shooting at a higher frame rate. So I would have to apply all kinds of special effects to this, such as a rolling shutter um, and uh, what are the other ones that they do? Uh, just, and you know, you can slow it down with this. Uh, I'm not stuck 50% just because that's what it automatically is. But if I slow it down to 25%, let's find out how it works. Let's see how it looks Woo. fast tuna coming through it 
it's doing a decent job but it's not as smooth as the 240 frames was let's watch a little bit more of this magnificent tuna footage at 240 frames a second because when you see its reflection at the surface right before the actual tuna appears and then the tuna breaks the surface I don't know it was pretty darn awesome obviously it would have been better if I had a shark doing that but it didn't work out that way now it's worth investigating if the 240 frames per second looked that smooth at its natural automatic speed how good would it look if we tried to reduce the speed even further as we tried to manipulate the 4k footage well let's take a look and let's play that particular shot back over and over and over again so I'm gonna hit M so that we have a marker and I am going to go up to the time wheel the clock thingy and let's take this and slow it down even further whoa interesting that sped it up remember the natural frame rate was 13 percent so in my mind slowing it down to 25 percent was going to be slow but no it was already um down to 13 so we'd have to go to 10 or even slower so let's hit custom and let's take that down to five okay and let's find my marker all right god damn it you're fucking shit for brains I got a little bit more appreciation of the pectoral fin coming out like that. I don't know if it's it's not perfectly smooth, but uh, that's not terrible. Considering I slowed it down to 5%, look at the water coming rushing at the screen. But here's another trade-off. Here's another compromise. Let's take this and make sure that you've got the timeline selected and come up and go to file and let's share and let's save current frame by the way if you don't see save current frame or any of the options here that you want go to add destination and you'll see the options here for example here would be save current frame you would just drag it over there but it's already over there so we're not going to do it i just was wanting to demonstrate in case it wasn't showing up for you okay so for some weird reason i should decide that i want to keep this particular frame I would go to share and save current frame make sure that you have it exactly where you want and that you have the timeline itself selected and we are actually going to so it's easy to find in this 1080 frame capture example And save that. Wow, look at that tuna go by. Can you believe that's half speed? That is a slowed down tuna, believe it or not. Let's, not that you would ever print this in your right mind, but let's go ahead and grab a still frame from this and just want to show you the file size comparison. And you can see that. Um, it's a little bit harder to get a nice clear frame because you don't have as many frames to choose from but you'll have a, an extremely high resolution unclear frame so share save current frame and this one will be called 4k frame comparison capture example comparison so how are those two going to compare when we go back and examine their file sizes? All right, so I'm going to search, and here we go. And look at that. 
16.6 megabytes. The dimensions are 1920 by 1080. Okay. Now change my search for the 4K and 66.4 megabytes compared to 16. That's a much larger file. And the dimensions are 3840 by 2160. All right, so if you should have happened to capture a good frame here in 4K, that would obviously get you a higher quality print. But you didn't have the good frame. So once again, you're in the conundrum of 4K or frames. Oh, hello. Look who's here. Look who's here. Uh. Oh, hello. Say hi to Wolf Bear. All right, when Wolf Bear shows up, that means that it's time for a walk. It means I've been in here for too long. So that is my cue to end this. Um, I wish it was more of a straight answer, clean cut, yes or no, you should use this or that. It's really up to you. It's up to what you're trying to capture. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, there's a compromise. So I hope this helped you decide what uh, is right for you. Um, if it made it even more confusing, let me know that too. And if you found it helpful, let me know that. Leave your comments, and as I said, I'm going to make another video that uh, just focuses on the anatomical details of the sharks as they're swimming by. I'll leave a link for that in the description. All right, thanks for tuning in, and let me know what you would like to see covered in this new uh, channel of mine. Bye.